By the end of January, 88% of people, which might just include you, will have given up on their goals for this year. So in this video, I'll cover five tips backed by research that will help you actually achieve your Blender goals. Tip number one, record. Okay, so this is going to sound really, really obvious, but bear with me. The first thing you want to do when setting your goals is to write them down. Told you, stupidly obvious, and it can't really be that simple, right? Well, of course, this isn't the one determining factor to whether or not you'll reach your goals, although that would be great, but it's an important aspect on committing to actions and accountability toward goal achievement. Researchers from the Dominican University of California have found that writing down your goals, you're around 42% more likely to achieve them, which I would say is a really significant improvement for such a simple task. As for where to write them down, I'll leave that up to you. You can put them in a Google Doc or Notion page, print them out and hang them on your wall, or write them on a whiteboard. Or, and I'll get into why in tip number three, you can write down your Blender goals in this dedicated channel on my Discord server. I've just made this channel, so feel free to write down whatever goals you have for this year. It doesn't even have to be Blender related. And then here's the kicker. This channel will only be open until the end of January, after which it will be locked and you can no longer make any changes, literally locking in your goals. By the end of the year, we'll open it back up again and you can let everyone know how you did on your goals for this year. Now, if you're seeing this video after January and the channel has already been locked, you can leave a comment on this video with your goals so that you still have some way of finding it back later on. Now, before you start writing, you will never actually achieve your goals even if you write them down if you don't know how to create obtainable goals, which actually brings us to tip number two, specify. I want to learn Blender. This is what I told myself back in 2019 when I set my sights on 3D. That's an admirable goal, but what does that mean specifically? VFX, games, modeling, sculpting, texturing, or all of it? Blender can do an extremely large amount of things, so this goal is super broad. And as it turns out, setting vague goals like this makes reaching them that much harder, and I experienced this myself as I gave up learning Blender the first time after only about 4 months. Studies show that setting specific and challenging goals lead to better performance. Instead of saying, I want to be good at Blender, try being specific and say for example, I want to learn how to create game-ready, photorealistic 3D models. You can then specify it even further by attaching a time limit to that goal. So, I want to learn how to create game-ready, photorealistic 3D models in the next four months. Even if you have multiple goals, it's always better to make these as specific as possible. Personally, I found this works really well and my second attempt at learning Blender went a lot better because I went for a specific goal, which in this case was creating a real estate game asset for an art challenge, which I found a lot easier to set my sights on and I did in fact manage to reach it. I would also recommend making the goals not overly large and unobtainable. So instead of trying to learn the entirety of geometry nodes, try making the goal something like, I want to learn how to use geometry nodes to make a simple particle animation. Not only is this a specific and challenging goal, it's also something doable, and these things combined will really help your chances of success. So now you know that being specific is an important factor to reaching your goals, but even with specific written down goals, there's still effort you have to put in. Which brings us to tip number three, consistency. There are a lot of simple things that are hard to do. Returning to Blender on a regular basis, daily, weekly, monthly, or whatever interval you have time for is in essence the key to becoming good at it. Yet this simple task is also the reason why it's so incredibly hard to succeed because being consistent is actually really difficult for us. Why? Well, because our brains are lazy. We have two ways or systems of thinking and decision making as described by psychologist Daniel Kahneman in his book Thinking Fast and Slow. System 1 is fast, automatic, emotional and instinctive. System 2 is slow, effortful, logical and calculated. Now there's a lot more to it but to sort of put it simply, our brains like to use system 1 whenever they can. Which means that every time you have to make the decision to boot up Blender and start learning or when you have to decide to go for that 5k run, we have to overcome our system 1 thinking that will just tell us to do the easy thing, the effortless, known, safe thing. Play a video game instead, or sit and relax on your couch because it's cold and rainy outside. We have to instead get into system 2 thinking here so we can direct our attention towards the goal and one of the best ways we have to do this is accountability. 
Using other people, we can create accountability for ourselves to be consistent with our goals. Something like your parents asking if you finished your homework, although annoying, is a great example of them trying to make sure you work towards your goals, in this case, finishing school. In essence, accountability can be compared to support, but it's more actionable. So to become consistent, we need others to confirm us regularly with our goals. Maybe you can ask your friends or your parents to ask for updates on your Blender journey every now and then. Or you can join a group of like-minded people that know where you're up to and want to see your progress. Whatever it is though, the purpose is to increase your performance and chances of doing well. Now, if you did decide on locking in your goals in the Discord channel I mentioned in tip number one, here's another benefit of that. After the channel is closed and everyone's goals are locked in, we'll be doing regular pings around every two weeks to remind you of your goals and to make sure you're on track. Basically, I'll be your accountability. And if you're on the fence whether or not you should do this, accountability has proven effects in increased feelings of competency, commitment, creativity, innovation, higher morale, and satisfaction. So by now your chances of reaching your goals have already improved a lot, but there's something else that you can do to further increase those odds. Invest. My education cost around $2,000 per year, and for every year I decided to commit to my studies, this cost would incur, even if I decided to quit later on. This is something that we call a sunk cost, an expense that cannot be recovered by additional spending or investment. Sunk cost is an inherent part of spending and doing business, but it comes with something strange. It opens the door to a psychological effect called sunk cost fallacy, which creates a mindset that because something has required significant monetary or time investment, it demands your continued effort. In my case, this resulted in me finishing my studies even though I knew by the end of year two that I didn't want to pursue this as a future career. But having already spent $4,000 in two years of my life drove me to continue even though I didn't really want to. Now you could consider this a rather negative example of sunk cost fallacy or positive depending on how you look at it, but you can hack this same effect to ensure you work towards reaching your blender goals as it's a really, really powerful thing. The first way to do this is by investing as much time as you possibly can into Blender. The more time you invest, the more you lose if you decide to give up on it. Especially if you combine this with creating relations with other Blender users, you can create this sort of cocktail of wanting to continue because you put in effort, build new relationships, and feel like you have responsibilities towards them. The second way you can do this is by investing into Blender with money. First of all, you could simply donate towards Blender every month, making it not free to use and therefore a waste of money if you didn't use it. But a better way is to invest into your skill set by buying courses or mentorship. Even something like buying a $5 to $10 course will create that feeling of not wasting that money and so makes it so that you actually want to do that course. Now I realize that courses can be expensive, but if you have the means to invest into them, having this sunk cost will help to reach your goals. If you're interested in in this route, I've created a document with a bunch of courses on a per category basis that you can check out to learn Blender. Like for example, CG Boost's amazing new discount bundle that contains all their best courses, or Max Hay's incredible new course that will let you create cyberpunk and urban environments. If you have less money to invest though, but still want access to tons of courses that will help you learn Blender, you can get access to over 700 Blender courses on Skillshare, the sponsor of this video, plus you also get access to learning a ton of other skills like how to increase your productivity in this course by YouTuber Ali Abdal, how to organize your workflow to maximize productivity. Ali is a true guru when it comes to things like distraction management or ensuring you get into a flow state and has helped me really increase my output as a creative. Skillshare now also has learning paths which are curated class collections that will help you master just about any skill you want, ranging from Blender to productivity and from freelancing to crafting your dream career path. There's literally something there for everyone who's open to growing and learning. Make sure to check out Skillshare now as the first 500 people to use my link in the description will get a one month free trial. Whatever path you choose to invest in will depend on your means of course, but whether it's just time, donating to Blender, or purchasing a course, sunk cost is a great way to hack your brain into achieving your goals. However, there is one thing that outshines all of the previously mentioned tips, and in my opinion is the one single best thing to do if you want to achieve your goals this year. Enjoy! 
Now, this might sound like the opposite of everything I just said, but having fun is the best way to ensure you reach your goals. These days, we as humans try to min max everything, whether it's paying attention to every macro in your food for gains in the gym, doing aim training in a game to increase your win ratio, or making sure you learn Blender as fast as possible. We do everything for the goal. Yet we forget that most, if not all of these things, are intended to give us joy. If you're not a professional bodybuilder, a contracted gamer or a pro 3D artist, there really is no reason to min-max everything. Of course you want to see results in the gym or not be a noob in game or create great looking art as an artist, but it should always stay enjoyable in my opinion. If going hard gives you that joy, good for you, but here's the honest truth. Blender is a tool to help you express your creativity. Use it to do that, and at some point people will want to hire you for the amazing and unique work you make anyways. Waking up every day and actually looking forward to booting up your PC and strutting Blender is infinitely stronger than any hack or tip out there. If you can find fun in learning and growing, in making mistakes, and in seeing that by dedicating time and effort you still got better no matter what time frame that was in, that's when you win in life. And had I known that myself earlier on in my own Blender journey, my life could have looked completely different now, which you can hear all about in this video.